let's uh, have a look at our picks for most improved player. Um, at the start of the season, we had some interesting picks. I think you laughed at me at the start of the season with this pick too, man. You're going to laugh at me right now, right, about Josh Giddy. I said, uh, you know, I think he was out for a breakout season. I actually had a logic to this, remember? Because we thought, I thought, at the start of the season, SGA was going to be missing the first sort of four to six weeks. Um, and therefore, Giddy would be a featured part of the, the Thunder, uh, especially in the early part of the season. Um, there was a bit of an irony there because then SGA did come back and I think he started game one. Um, and, uh, and then within, I think, a week or two, Giddy was actually out injured for uh, several weeks, I think ankle or something, I think like that. Um, so, you know, bring out the stats here. Obviously, Giddy's stats, uh, you know, have, uh, you know, gone up uh, slightly. He's averaging about three points more a game. Uh, he's averaging actually less assists than he did last season. He's playing less minutes than he is last season. And it's pretty much his uh, rebound rate is identical. He is shooting much better, though, which is nice to see. That might mean he actually going to, you know, stick around, right? He might take that leap. It's up to 47% at the moment after a pretty woeful rookie year. Um, but I, I think, I, look, honestly, he's not going to win most improved player. Uh, I think that goes to your new favorite player, Laurie Markkinen, man. Laurie Markkinen over at the Utah Jazz, you know, is uh, coming in, turning out a career year, averaging nearly 10 points more per game, nearly three more rebounds. And uh, guess what? He's winning. He's winning. And, um, and he's also nearly joining that 50 40 90 club all right which uh becomes a a real sort of um i guess a a high high sort of bar to sort of reach that you're actually a pretty efficient player and i think uh i think laurie marketing should definitely be at the moment a front runner uh for most improved player it's funny i look back on my pick which was jalen brunson and I had sound logic with that as well. I think similar to you, you know, new team doing that. And you could make a case and say that he has some contention narratively. He's went to the Knicks. They're now competitive and relevant. Um, but then you've obviously brought up Josh Giddy. Josh Giddy is probably not the OKC player I would have picked. Uh, Shea probably deserves a shout out, you know, jumping up to 30 points a game and, you know, playing consistently well. The only thing that would be his downfall will probably be the games played. Uh, if you look through basketball reference, in terms of games played, he plays every game that he intends to play, and it's only about 50, 50 games, and then he gets sat because of an injury. But I think we both know what OKC is doing with that. Laurie Marketing, you were right, 10 points up. You know, definitely not the name that I think people expected coming out of that trade. I think it was like, oh, yeah, that's a, that's a piece. It's another role player, and he's turned out to be quite a big role. Uh, but I'm going to double down on the pick that I actually said at the end of the video. I wish I picked at the start. And it's Tyrese Halliburton. Um, I think I'm a little biased to winning, at least in the discussions we're having tonight. I think it's important. He is contributing to a winning pace of squad. I know that you don't view them as being that much better than Orlando for the rookie of the year candidate. Uh, but, you know, I do. You know, he's averaging 20 and 10. There's not a lot of guards in the history of the league that have done that. He's shooting 48% uh, from the field, basically 40% for three, and almost... 88% from free throw. So he's actually quite close to your 50, 40, 90 as well. Just doesn't have it in all the categories instead of just one. Um, but I think it's just a case of, you know, we're, we're, sorry to divert, but you said ball, ball as well. You know, another player that could be worthy of contention. Minutes are one thing, right? So Laurie Markin is using his minutes more wisely, right? Ball, ball is definitely using his more wisely. Uh, Shea is not using his minutes more wisely. He's just more efficient in the minutes that he has. But I just think that the Indiana thing, I think Tyrese Halliburton, you know, he's in his fifth year of the league. And it's the it's the fact that he is now a star player on the team. I think that's that's what for some reason nobody ever had pegged for him. They viewed him as an interesting prospect, very talented, multifaceted guard. Uh, but I don't know why people didn't view him as a number one option. And instantly he's come to Indiana and he's kind of proven that he can be a number one option. And, you know, he's revived kind of Miles Turner's sorry, Miles Turner sort of situation in there and Buddy Hill's playing well. I, I think there's real merit to his case, but definitely a more competitive field than I would have predicted uh, at the start of the season. Look, I, I love Halle Burton's game. He's injured at the moment, isn't he? How long is he out for? Uh, what is the injury? Because I can't find anything specifically. Uh, I, think, I think he's out for at least two to four weeks, I think, isn't he? That's terrible for my uh, 
caliber take it, which you told me before <laughs> I started saying it. I might be wrong. You tell me. I'm just uh, bringing to light that he currently is injured and how long will he it be says out? That he's out of, it says that he's out at least two weeks with uh, a sprained left elbow and absorbed a mild left knee bruise. So he obviously fell over. That's how I interpret that medical report. Um, I, I think, look, it could go two ways here. That could be the Shake Gilgis treatment where all of a sudden he's not playing the rest of the season because tanking is too important. Or it could be simply just give him two weeks because the schedule's light enough that we can give him three games off or four games off. I'm not concerned just yet. Look, I, I think uh, Halliburton should be in the consideration for the for most improved player you know, um, race. Uh, look, it could go either way. He does have to come back. Paces... Paces are now just over 500, I think. Um, it, uh, the longer he is out, the more you feel they're going to slide under 500. Uh, I think by the time that he comes back and by the All-Star break, um, I'm, look, my pick here is that I don't think they're going to be a 500 team. And uh, and then, like you said, they're going to have to make some decisions like OKC, make those sort of decisions towards the you know last few months of the season. What are they trying to now achieve for the remainder of the year? Uh, I don't think anyone's sort of making the case that you know Pace is going to go all the way in the East, or even sort of really get further than than anything than first round fodder. <laughs> Let's be clear. So I think um, I think look Halliburton could win it, but I think uh, Markinen here at the moment has definitely got the the inside track. Yo, this is two guys with spare time. I'm Faz. This is Nick. You're probably a basketball fan like us, so hopefully you can throw us an assist and giving our video a like and uh, subscribing to our channel. And if you've got thoughts, feelings, or even some suggestions, please put them down in the comments section below. And thank you for using your spare time to watch us in our spare time.